Hello everyone. It has been a while and as you can see from the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the differences between over the board chess and online chess by diving into an over the board chess game I played last night. And I'm going to be trying to give some what of an insight into my thought process. And I spoke at length with my opponent after the game as well and went over the game. And I'll try, if I can remember, to give some details about what my opponent was thinking, just to kind of show the big differences between online chess and over the board chess. So my opponent here opened with d4. And this actually immediately put me on the back foot because when I was trying to prepare for my opponent beforehand, I saw that he played e4 like every single game and I asked him afterwards I was like I swear you play e4 uh, af after the game and he said that he'd at the start of this season started playing d4 so immediately I caught a bit off guard I played c6 because I play the Karo Khan and I play the Slav but I was inviting him to go e4 so that I could get a normal Karo Khan which he said that he almost actually did to my surprise, he played knight to c3. And I was like, uh, okay, d5. And here I was expecting e4. And this actually transposes to a normal line of the Karo Khan, which you can reach in a more normal move order <clears throat> like this. Right? Same position, different move order. But he doesn't go uh, e4. He goes bishop to f4. And here I'm thinking, okay. My opponent's playing a Jabava London. I actually have no idea how to play against this. And I'm pretty sure, typically, in Jabava London structures, if I just rewind a bit, something like this. Black is supposed to try and go c5 at some point. Pretty sure that's the idea. But because I have gone... Oh, let's uh, save spoilers. <laughs> because I have already committed to the move c6 i've got to just roll with it and the position is fine objectively bishop f5 f3 my opponent plays this f3 move and he told me after the game that he'd learned this because he'd lost a game where basically the opponent that i played last in the league who i beat he played it against this guy over the board chess works very differently where like people know who each other are in the league and you know you'll follow each other's games see who's been beating who he saw that i'd beaten this previous opponent who had beaten him in this opening right weird kind of circle there but he'd been beaten by this and i saw the move f3 and i was like right okay so clearly you're trying to play something like e4 g4 also exists but I wasn't that scared of it. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to go e6. And I don't believe this can work. He plays it. Bishop g6. h4. Obviously, h5 would trap my bishop. So here I have two options. Either I go h6. And if h5, I can retreat and I'm fine. But I was a little bit concerned about moves like bishop to d3. Which force a trade of bishops. And now the move g5 just kind of lurks forever. And let's say normal play continues. Um, these aren't necessarily the best moves. But if I ever try and castle kingside, this g5 move at some point is going to slaughter me. I don't know if it works in this position. Knight h5 computer thinks I'm okay because I'm attacking the bishop. The point is... I didn't want to allow this kind of pawn setup where g5 would always be a problem. So I respond with h5 and g5. And here, the best move, well, there's two moves, right? Uh, my opponent said that he actually played a game where his opponent went knight to h7, which just looks insane to me because it's, it's just a bad move. Um, I was debating between knight to g8 and knight f to d7. Now, knight to g8 is actually the better move. And the reason, the reason I liked this idea was because I can now get this bishop to d6. Because if the knight goes to d7, the bishop can't go to d6 because the queen's cut off, right? 
The knight can come to g8 and can go via e7 into the light squares. So let's say something like bishop d3 is played. This isn't necessarily the best move. Bishop d6 is the best move. But point is, I can do something like this. Let's say e4 can't be played, which is the problem with this. But let's say it can't be played. If we have some kind of exchange, I can take with the knight and I'm good. My pawn structure is still intact. And I can maybe even try and go e5 at some point. But visually i didn't like this because i was like okay um but my opponent can just continue to develop and yes i do have this bishop to d6 move but i was a little bit concerned about um this pawn structure here this is okay but i was worried about my e6 pawn because if i get it to e5 okay maybe i'm all right maybe i can castle and put my king on h7 but it just looks a little bit iffy. It looks a little bit iffy. And the computer says it's fine. But again, visually, this just looks kind of whack. Looks kind of whack. And again, remember, although the computer is saying there is pretty much equality, I feel like I'm massively on the back foot because I feel like I've been caught in some kind of opening trap where, you know, all these pawn advances have been made against me. And I'm getting suffocated a bit. And I've got no idea what theory is going on now. In an online game, I might be, um, I might not be as scared. I might just play the moves that I think are best and just see what happens. Because who cares if you lose an online game? Over the board, the stakes are a little bit higher. And to be fair, if I had lost... Actually, sorry, scrap that. Scrap that. <laughs> um... Basically, the, the, the stakes are a bit higher. It's a league format. So I brought my knight to d7, which the computer says it's the best move, except it's not. So I don't know why it's saying that. Um, it's not the best move. Knight g8 is the best move. But it's, it's okay. It's okay. The problem is my bishop can't come to d6 anymore, and this knight can't develop properly. And I've got to be careful about moving the c-pawn to bring the knight to c6 because the knight can get into b5 and exploit these weak dark squares. I'm just very cramped. My opponent goes bishop d3. Here I have absolutely no choice but to take. Let's say I go c5, the computer's second favorite move. Knight b5, knight a6. Stopping this. Take, takes, takes. Queen d3. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm not in good shape. I'm not in good shape whatsoever. Apparently, queen a5 here is the best. After this, then here, and then if here. Apparently, black is good? Ah, whatever. I'm, I'm never going to find that. <laughs> never. So I take. Queen takes. And I go g6. Now, you have to go g6. Because, let's say, I was looking at this with my opponent after the game. Let's say I go something like knight to a6 here, and g6 is played. I can't take because of queen takes. So I've got to play something like f6. And the computer thinks this is fine, but the reason I rejected this was because I felt like I could never castle now. Because the h5 pawn would be so weak, because I don't have a pawn on g6 to defend it. And my e6 pawn is probably okay. I can probably push it to e5 at some point. But I was just really concerned about king safety. And I thought with this bishop being so strong, castling queenside would be questionable. And this is just a very strong pawn anyway. It's difficult for me to get rid of it. So instead, I go g6 here. The computer likes this. I'm trying to stop my opponent from doing anything on the king side, right? And here, as you can see from the evaluation, the computer thinks that I'm better. It, it gives me minus 0 0.37 on the analysis, which is kind of crazy because, again, big difference. Because it's over the board chess, I feel like I'm still worse and I'm very cramped and I'm trying to fight for a draw. Whereas, actually, the computer thinks that I'm better. But I'm terrified. I don't know this opening. My opponent castles. I go bishop g7. Just developing the bishop. e4. I never want to take this. Because knight takes and my dark squares get exposed. I want, let's say, something like knight a6. I always want him to take me. And then I can take back. And I can monitor this e4 square. Because 
If my opponent can get into it, I'm going to lose. So I need him to take me, but he wants me to take him. So nobody's taking anybody, basically. Uh, there's just a lot of tension in the center. And if my opponent ever moves the pawn to e5, he just is losing. Because this pawn can never do anything, because this is too well defended. And the only pawn break in the position is c5, which I control. And if c5 happens, undermining the d4 pawn, then e5 becomes weak. And I can start blasting forward on the queen side, and I'm a lot better. My opponent knows this. He's a good player. Here, though, I need to do what either a5 to take space, knight to a6, or castle. I need to do one of these things. I chose to move a6. This was a little bit silly. The reason I chose this. What was Yeah, so the reason I chose to move a6 was partially I was a little bit scared of... Um, what was I scared of? Not this. I think it might have been moves like bishop to d6. Yeah, if I castle bishop d6, rook e8. I think I was a little bit concerned about this. But also, if castles and takes... Yeah, yeah, so this, I think this was my issue, is that I wanted to take with the C pawn, but I was worried about knight to b5. The computer thinks there's nothing wrong with this, and that black is in very good shape. But I, I didn't want to allow the knight to get into b5 and get into my dark squares. So, and also, if um castle uh, and take, I didn't want to take with the e pawn. Um, I wanted to take with the C pawn rather than the E pawn. The C pawn, if I, if I if I take with the E pawn, the C pawn continues to defend the B five square. But I didn't really like this prospect. I wanted to open up the C file because I thought it gave me nice attacking opportunities. So for that reason, I went A six, and it's kind of this is where I start to go wrong. I start to just clam up a little bit. Knight G to E two. A castle, another inaccuracy apparently. My opponent goes bishop d6, attacking my rook, rook to e8. By the way, there were some interesting lines here that me and my opponent spoke about after the game, where you could try taking in something like knight takes and going like rook e1 check, because I can't block, obviously, and my king only has one square, and then like this kind of thing, but it doesn't really work, and you can't preempt it with bishop to d6. Then I'll just move my queen and go this way. But we did both see this after the game. There's some interesting lines of like queen e3, queen e7 type things. Like, you t oh no, that hangs the bishop. But it, it, it's kind of scary looking, but I'm fine. Um, black is not really in significant danger here. But it's worth looking at. Worth looking at. My opponent goes knight g to e2, which is just a good move because if I castle kingside, these pawns are going to be weak, and this knight can access the f4 and g3 squares to put immense pressure on the pawns. And let's just say, let's just manufacture some weird position now. Um, are we going to do this like this? Maybe there's ideas of sacrificing on g6 and picking up h5 etc just something to be aware of right doesn't work in this particular situation but something to be aware of bishop d6 rook e8 f4 f4 is a bit of an issue because if my opponent gets f5 in i'm kind of screwed i'm kind of screwed the thing is though he can't play f5 just yet i was actually thinking here if I do nothing, I'm probably okay. So let's say I just go b5, right? And if my opponent tries f5 now, I have d takes e4, attacking the queen, and then I can take on f5 because I've removed the defender, chase the knight away, I'm up a pawn, and white has no attack. Okay. So my issue is I didn't want to commit to b5 because I didn't think it was doing anything. So... I started calculating either knight to b6 or knight to f8. Knight to b6 attacks the bishop. 
if the bishop comes anywhere along this diagonal, then it's going to get chased away no matter where it goes, right? There is no way for the bishop to be safe on this diagonal. So the bishop has to come to e5, right? And it offers me a trade of bishops, which is kind of scary. Kind of scary. And if I go knight 8 to d7, takes takes f5, it's a bit different now. Because if I go d takes e4, white doesn't take back. White goes f6 check first. And my opponent says he said after the game that he actually missed this line. Um, and after king g8, knight e4, white is better. I saw this line. The problem is, what I didn't realize was that after the move f5, I saw this, but I didn't think it was that good for me. Something like takes, computer says I got rookie three, which I did actually miss. If I'd have seen this, I probably would have played it. Because although my king is weak, I'm actually okay. I can bring the rook to f8 and I should be chilling. Something like this. Black is apparently completely winning. Um, I guess there's a ton of pressure down the e-file. It's looking very good. But I went knight to f8 rather than knight to b6. And the reason knight b6 is better is because the knight can come to c4 and then support the e3 square. This I failed to realize because I spent a long time on this. I was, again, psychologically, I wasn't thinking about advancing. I was thinking about curling up in a ball and protecting myself. And this knight to f8 move, although it's a mistake, it does do a fantastic job of defending my light square. So if my opponent ever tries these sacrifice ideas, my knight is going to be there to help out. And there are some lines where I was talking about this f5, f6 check idea, where this knight can maneuver to e6 to guard the g7 square, which I could get checkmated on if this queen appeared on h6. And me and my opponent actually played through some variations after the game where that actually would come in really, really useful for me. So it wasn't a completely stupid move, knight to f8, but it wasn't great. Because what it does, it attacks the bishop, and the bishop offers me a trade. I go knight bd7, because I'd love to take with the, with, with the knight. And here I was expecting bishop takes bishop, king takes bishop, f5, ef5, f6 check, king g8, knight e4, and here, we actually played for a variation after the game, if I can remember correctly, with queen c7, I think queen f3, e5, takes, knight takes, queen g3, rook a d8, and we agreed that this is probably good for black. Now. White doesn't have to take here. D5 is probably the better move, uh, which I did point out to him. But it's difficult to say what he would have done because there is a very good chance he would have taken here and I would have been absolutely fine. But again, it's not so cut and dry because again, like I said, he missed this F6 idea. So because he miss missed that F6 idea, here he went Rook H to F1. I immediately snapped the bishop off the board and kept my bishop on the board because what I was saying to him after the game is that if I take here with the bishop, maybe I can try and push for a win, but it's very, very risky. Taking with the knight, I felt was an admission that I wasn't going to push for a win, but that, that I was happy with a draw. Reason I'm saying this is because this bishop Right, I've, I've got all my pawns on light squares, literally all of them, which means this bishop, the dark square bishop, is integral to defend my dark squares, right? Um, my opponent no longer has a dark square bishop because I've traded it off, which means this bishop is an excellent defensive piece. However, it can't really do anything because of the way my opponent's pawns are situated. If my opponent tries to trade too many things off, however... This bishop will come alive after moves like c5, undermining this e5 pawn, like I said, uh, I said earlier. 
And if I ever get in behind these pawns, it's game over. I win. Which means my opponent can't really trade off too much because I have this dark square bishop and he doesn't. I go queen c7. And here I'm looking at the e5 pawn. I'm potentially preparing c5 to try and kind of liquidate everything in the center. The lines don't quite work out for me. Um in this particular variation, but I'm also defending the f7 pawn. My opponent goes queen f3, I go rook e7, my opponent goes rook f2, rook d8, rook df1. And here, apparently, I should be going b5, which, I mean... Oh, okay, I'm sorry about that. I hope that didn't kill anybody's eardrums. Um, the computer wants me to go b5 here. I didn't really want to expand on the queen side though. I felt like I wasn't able to commit resources that way. And again, psychologically, I'm just going for a draw here. Especially because it's a 6 versus 6 format. And on the other boards, I felt like we should be getting enough points so that if I draw this game, we should get a draw overall, which is a decent result. Um, just in an over, like a big picture league table kind of situation. Rook df1. I go rook dd7. The computer actually thinks this is a mistake. And that knight to f4, white has an advantage. My opponent did not see this move. Um... He mentioned after the game he was maybe going to go knight to a4 to try and get into the c5 square. The computer likes taking here. b6 also exists. We played through some weird variation here. Uh, I think it went like this. Rook c7. How did it go? I think it was rook c7, knight g3 c5 take take check yeah yeah it was this rook e8 um rook d1 rook b8 knight a4 rook b4 b3 and then something like d3 oh no not in this not in this position no, it was, it was like knight d7, here, here, something along these lines. And the computer says white is better. I don't think this was exactly what we played through. Again, this was just after the game when we were discussing it. But there were many kind of variations in the end game where black gets the upper hand. And again, that's only if we play some really particular line. Uh, after knight to a4, e4, the computer thinks we're completely equal anyway. If take, then b6, then the queen can't slide over. And I'm probably going to get c5 in. And if black gets c5 in, black might be better. So white has to be really careful here. But again, um, there was a draw offered on board 4. I was playing on board 2 uh, after I played this move. And my player accepted it. Then there was a draw offered on board 3. But... Uh, my teammate was winning on that board. And then I offered my opponent a draw like immediately afterwards because I was pretty tired, to be honest. Uh, it, it's like evening games. And it felt like my opponent just tripling up here was actually quite lazy. And I thought that it was an indication that he wasn't going to push for a win. Also, based on his previous run of form, he hasn't been doing that well so far this season uh, overall. And I... I've, I've had like a bit of an unbeaten run going for the past like seven or eight games. And he was telling me afterwards that he knew that. So I offered him a draw. He took a couple of minutes to think about it and then he accepted it. Uh, we agreed on a draw in this position. Again, computer thinks that white is better, but I have no idea how he's ever going to prove that. Um, but if we just follow a computer line here, knight f4, b5, ed5, cd5 king b1 queen b6 knight c to e2 rook c7 
And yeah, the computer wants to go for this sacrifice here. But I'm not sure. Not sure whether it works. Um, rook c4, h5, take, take. Oh no, you can't do that because of the pin. So queen h4. Yeah, what, what a normal move. What a normal move. And I mean, the computer says that white's winning. <clears throat> but are you really going to see that 10 moves away? And even if you do see that, are you going to think white's winning? Doubt it. Doubt it. Again, psychology plays a massive part in over the board chess for many reasons. And I will actually link a video over here now where I go a bit more in depth on some of those ideas on a more abstract level. I would highly recommend you watch it. Thank you very much for watching this video and check that out if you haven't seen it already.